Shalom and good day all, this is Tehillim 29, back again for a future state Fool's Gold review and this time we are going to be reviewing, or I'm going to be reviewing Harley Quinn issue 2 and Swamp Thing issue 2. As you can see over here, this is how I do my racing system, I of course rate all those things and how much I think they're worth. So let's see, how did Fool's Gold go around for this particular week of comics so time to start off with harley quinn then after that we move on to something now um the price of this one in australian dollars is seven dollars fifteen and i will be covering how much i think the cover art and story are worth and that applies to all in this area of Fool's Gold. Let's get started. So, starting off with the cover, did the cover really bring across what was actually happening in the story? I'm sad to say, it really didn't. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice looking cover, but in this case, the cover really failed the story and for a future state title you think that they would put in the effort to at least bring in something that really works within the story so this is where I gave the cover a 4 out of 10 uh, to which I believe the cover was worth about 90 cents Australian let's turn to the internal art all right this is the art at the beginning i'll show you some at the middle one thing i will point out is that i did actually enjoy the internal art and this internal art feels like it would really work say for an animated series and i'll show you the last bit before i give you how i rated it out of 10 and how much I believe it was worth. And this is some art towards the end of the book. Alright. For the internal art, I gave it 7 out of 10. To which I believe it was worth at least um, $1.15 Australian dollars. Now, what about the story? Now, of course, this story follows up from the last issue. But when we begin the story... Of course, we do get our cast of characters, Black Mask, um, hearing of Professor Pig's name, of course, Harley Quinn, because it's about Harley Quinn. Of course, Scarecrow. And of course, Sentry. These do make their appearances, and you do get to see them within the yard. One thing that I found this story lacked was depth in regards to location where the fuck was the location at the beginning of the story it would have been nice to know that for me the reader because the only location that we got in the story was just before the end which is around Gotham Docks. This lost points dramatically. Out of 10. To which the story gained 3 points out of 10. To which I believe the story was worth 70 Australian cents. Giving a total of $3.10 overall. Uh, <laughs> you ain't making up that $7.15 which I bloody paid for it. You lost money. Oh my goodness. Well, now it's time to move on to Swamp Thing. As we move on to Swamp Thing, I really did enjoy the cover. And this cover, in a way, really worked along with the story including the art. I like 
the perspective of what the artist has done here. Um, basically putting Swamp Thing, in a way, it looks like he's carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. But in the background, it also looks like the sun there. And it's really nice as how that is brought across. And underneath him, you've got human skulls. I enjoyed that, to which I gave the cover art 7 out of 10, to which I believe it was worth $1.50 Australian. Let's go into the internal art. Now, this is some art around the beginning. I'll now move to art towards the middle. Alright, this is some of the art towards the middle. And finally, time to go to art towards the end. Alright, as we move to the art towards the end, um, as you look to that left page right there, this is actually something I've really been enjoying within the art. It's like the artist here is actually giving us um, the anatomy of the creations of Swamp Thing and like Swamp Thing's people. I really enjoyed that throughout the story and I also enjoyed it in the last issue. To which I gave this art rating 6 out of 10. which I believe it was worth a dollar twenty-five. Now time to move on to the story. As we move on to the story, um, of course the key cast character was the character of Swamp Thing. Uh, one of the locations was actually a location that we went to in the last issue and I really enjoyed that the story creator brought this back into the into this issue but this time we we're back in the area of Eureka at none of that or none of it but we're also a I think it said it was about 10,000 miles well, I could be incorrect on that, or 10,000 kilometers away from that area. And it was really nice to see how that was used in the story. We got the visitation of the characters that were in the past issue, in this issue. And seeing Swamp Thing really going out of his way to sacrifice... To see the human race survive more than the people that represent the green. That was amazing. Um, that really stood out in the story and I really enjoyed that. To which I gave the story 6 out of 10. And it deserves that 6 out of 10. To which I believe... The story was worth a dollar twenty-five, giving an overall total of four dollars fifty. So in this instance, it's made a little over half back um, in its actual story. Um, big thanks to the writers uh, who worked on these. I really enjoyed the art. Until then, let's keep it colourful. Please don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you've now reached the end of this video, you are awesome. Shalom and good day all, this is TikiLM29 back again for another Future State Fool's Gold review. And in this one, we are going to cover The Flash, Issue 2, and Superman of Metropolis, Issue 2. Um, for the amount of which The Flash is, it's $7.15. And I'll be covering how much I think 
both cover art and story are worth. The same also apply, applies for Superman of Metropolis, to which it's actually worth $10.75 Australian. And as you can see, the Superman of Metropolis one has three stories in it. So that'll be covered after the Flash. So, let's get to it. Now, beginning everything off in relation to the cover, does this cover in any way reflect what happens within the story? Well, surprisingly, it does. To which I gave the cover 6 out of 10. To which I believe it was worth $1.25. So let's move into the internal art. Now this is some of the art at the beginning. I'll now move into the area of the middle. This is the art of the middle. And I'll now move on to the end. As you can see, the art in this was actually pretty well and pretty consistent. And I enjoyed it. Um, it did allow time for some bright areas to be shown but it also allowed some areas for dark areas to be shown to which i gave the art six out of ten to which i also believe it was worth a dollar twenty five but what about the story now was this story a high ten uh no was it a high nine uh no was it a high eight Nope. High seven? Nope. High six? Yes. Just. Why did it get the high six? Well, one good thing is in this story is that the writer did remember to add in locations to which we got to cover Central City and also the Speed Lab. They did a good job in pointing out who the cast of characters were, which I did enjoy. But is this the best of stories? No, if it's anything that really needs to sort of... If anything, this story brings across how dangerous famine is. It's got nothing to do with the Flash family. It's got to show how dangerous famine is. And how he praise upon members in the speed force the idea is good but you've got to provide a weakness for the villain too like a proper weakness and in this it felt like it gave no weakness like a real proper weakness which would help the character and it would also raise up the story score to about maybe seven, maybe eight. And this is why I gave the story seven, oh, not seven, six out of ten to which I believe it was worth a dollar twenty-five, giving a total of three dollars and seventy-five cents. Time to move on to Superman of Metropolis issue two. Like I said before, this story actually has three stories in it. But before I do, I'd actually like to move on to the backup stories before I move on to the main. Because I'll, I've actually got something to say about the main story. So, just wait here until I get the pages set for the second story to which will be reviewed. So, jumping directly into some of the art within the second story. To which we have the cast character of Shiloh Norman. And we get the location of Bakerline, which is actually shown within the story. And I really enjoyed that because it brought some more depth as to other places within Metropolis. And it was really nice that this was brought in. I did like the art, though, for Shiloh Norman. But one thing I'd like to see done in this story uh, for the art I gave it 5 out of 10 to which I believe it was worth a dollar 
For the story though, I felt that the story really slipped this time. Um, there's quite a bit happening here and by what I sort of see here in what the artist and what the writer is trying to do is that Shiloh Norman has added some new abilities to his mother box component which he uses with his suit to escape situations. And even though, yes, you can see it within the art, I, I really appreciate that. It would be nice to know why he made those changes in the mother box. And that wasn't really brought across within the story. To which I gave the story 3 out of 10, to which I believe it was worth 70 cents. Don't get me wrong, I really liked what happened here with the art. In fact, I think in some cases, um, if you are going to do this with, say, Shiloh uh, Norman's suit, change the suit up a little bit more so we can see that there has been changes. Like, don't make him appear like the original Mr. Miracle. Change his suit in a way or change his costume in a way to which, it, in some essences, that it reflects his new abilities with the mother box, which is within the suit. That is the only thing I have to say about this. Time to move on to the third story. Moving on the issue of the Guardian, or the story of the Guardian in this, this art, it felt pretty consistent, but it also felt like it lacked in some places. To which I gave the art overall 5 out of 10. It was nice in, like, bringing across some of the characters, but I also felt it, it lacked in some consistency with the characters. To which I now move on to the story, um... Dealing with the cast of characters, of course, we've got the key guardian himself. We've got... Well, I do enjoy the fact that they brought across who these characters were. But did it actually help with the story? I'd have to say, in some places, not really. I really think it could have improved a bit more. Um, of course, we've got the area of the Daily Planet, which is visited within the story. Um... Why was that necessary? I get that it's being held in Metropolis, but surely there are other places in Met Metropolis apart from the Daily Planet? Alright, be more creative. Where, where's your creativity spark? Alright, surely there's more than one newspaper place in the area of Metropolis, apart from the Daily Planet. Um, I'm going to bring this up. As much as I disliked some of the things that Brian Michael Bendis did, at least he did show the Daily Star, to which Lana Lang was from. Why couldn't you have used maybe even the Daily Star's location? And maybe even show some of the area around that. Is that too lazy for your liking? I also do like as well that one area or one new area that it did bring in, which I did like, and that was bringing an area around the area of Metropolis University. That I did like. Right, that brought in a new area within Metropolis to which us, the reader, got to visit. So in that, thank you very much. And I know that was, know that was shown at the beginning of the story. But what's the overall mark for the story, for the rating? 3 out of 10, to which I believe it's worth 70 cents. I did sort of like the ending in it though, but 
it felt a little bit rushed, especially the ending part. It could have been shown with less glass. Now to finally move on to the main story. Did the cover in any way help what was happening within the story? Um, did it get a 10? No. Did it get a 9? No. Did it get an 8? Or a 7? Or a 6? No, but it did get a 5 though, to which I believe it was worth a 5 out of 10 and worth $1. I think it really would have improved. I think the variant cover for this was actually more of a better choice. And I think they should have used this uh, the variant cover as the main cover. Not this cover. Because if they had have used the main cover, I would have given this cover rating a little bit higher. So let's have a look at the internal art around the beginning and middle first before I move on to the end. Right, this is some of the art around the beginning. Some art around the middle. And I'll finally move on to the last one around the end. Okay, for the art around the end. Um, the art felt pretty consistent in some places, but it also felt it lacked in regards to a little bit more description around some of the faces that could have been used. So in this, I gave the art a 6 out of 10. But how does this all work in regards to the story? Now, the key locations that we get in the story are... And including the cast, of course, uh, this Superboy, whoever this Superboy might be. And let me point out, the, uh, um, the storyteller here had a great opportunity. And I think the delivery here could have been so much better. Um, as you know, I'm a Super Suns reader. And I enjoy picking up and reading and even reviewing Super Suns. Um, the cast that considered of uh, Kara, of course, this supposed Superboy or Superman on Earth, brain cells, which is, of course, connected to Brainiac. And one thing I really liked that this brain cells did, uh, especially in the brain cell ship, and also outside of the ship to which Kara was, but especially inside. Now, with this character of this Superman. Um, one of the interactions that I did like. And this is why I gave it the score I did. But I think it could have built more on top of it. To which it could have called, um, To which it could have gotten. Even a 7 or an 8. Or even a 9 out of 10. From me. But it didn't. It scored a 6 out of 10 from me, to which I believe it was worth $1.25, giving an overall total of $3.50. Now, for the other ones, they're $1.70 each. Now, there was an interaction with this Superman, this supposed John Samuel Kent. And this John Samuel Kent, in its interaction with brain cells, it brings up something in relation to Superman. And it does a bit of like a research or historical research. And I really think what it could have done in the story is say, I've taken some of your DNA and not found this John... This Jonathan Kent Superman or Superboy in history. To which it would then give us Super Sons readers an opportunity to learn who exactly is this Superboy we're told to believe is actually Superboy but isn't. You had that great opportunity there. 
Because if this brain cells was as fucking as smart as it was, it should have been able to pick up on the convergence history of John Samuel Kent. In fact, it should have been able to point out his birth in the DC Universe. It didn't. And that is why I gave the story 6 out of 10. Well, until then, please don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And until then, let's keep it colourful. Shalom and good day all. This is Tehillim29, back again for another Future State Fool's Gold review. And this time... We're going to be covering two more titles. The next Batman, to which rolls in at around $14.55 in currency conversion. And of course, Wonder Woman, issue 2. Now, the next Batman is issue 3, and we'll be beginning with that first. Um, as you can see, I'll be rating by cover uh, and story. And how much I think they're worth. So, time to get started. Well, let's start off this cover. Does this cover really help with the story? Well, not completely. And it doesn't really cover, well, some of the things that happen within the story. So, for this, I gave the cover 6 out of 10 which I believe it's worth $1.25 in Australian dollars. So um, it's got big shoes to fill to meet, uh, to meet up in um, getting the $14.55 out of me. And it's not on a very good start. Let's move into the internal art. I'll show you some, around, I'll show you some art around the beginning and also around the middle. Because there's two more stories to cover in this. Alright, this is around the beginning of the story. I do enjoy the art in this. And this art did sort of remain pretty consistent. I'll now move to around the middle of the story. As you can see, I did actually enjoy the art in this story. But I also gave the art 6 point. Well, 6 out of 10, which I believe it was worth $1.25. But what about the story? Well, this story does sort of like catch up from where it was last time. And to be personally honest, I wouldn't trust Tim Jason Fox as Batman. Give him, give him his own identity... And yeah, maybe I would consider it. Um, of course, in the cast of characters, we did get a lot in relation to the Fox family. Plus a villain, which sort of felt unnamed a bit. And another problem. Another problem too that I found with this story why aren't you putting in the locations? All right, you did this with the last one. You didn't learn from your mistakes. And if you don't intend on learning from your mistakes, why the hell should I bother picking up your comic run for when it comes out in March, April, or May? You've sown in a terrible narrative here, right? Because as I am the reader of this comic, yeah, it's nice to show it in the panels, but it's also nice to know when you have it show up on screen. 
Uh, you're meant to be a big, famous star in the industry, Ridley. It's not showing in this. Alright? Didn't you, in your career, when you did 12 years a slave, indicate locations up on the screen so that the viewer knew where things were taking place? Give at least a time as to when it was taking place? I'm pretty sure you would have, even though I've not seen the film myself. That is something I even enjoy in films. Right, if you can't bring that across to the comic, get out of the comic industry. You're not worth it. I'd rather put up with terrible Bender storytelling than this. And that says a lot. At least in a lot of his storytelling, in Bender's storytelling, he did manage, after a little bit of time, to put in time, location... And give a better idea of who the cast of characters were. In this, you're sort of failing. And failing effortlessly. To which I gave the story 0 out of 10. To which it's worth 0 cents. Gotta be blunt about it. And that's the point of Fool's Gold. I'll now move on to the backstories. So, time to move on to the second story in this. And this deals with the Outsiders. And I really enjoy the art that's done here for Duke Thomas, as well as Katana. I do think it's a little bit better than the last issue, to which we last saw her. But in the process, we also get to see Black Lightning. So, a very clear presentation as to who the cast is in this as well as where some of these things are taking place. With this story, it will be rated on both art and story. So let me show you some another page or two from this story from The Outsiders. As you can see, there's quite a bit of action to this scene. And I also enjoyed the story as well as the dialogue. Um... The writer took the time to put in the right dialogue bubbles and also allowing space for the art to do the talking and a bit of breathing for the artist. To which I gave the art 7 out of 10, to which I believe it was worth $1.50. Now, for the previous story, um, it r did reach... Or the first story gained a total of $2.50. Uh, this story, I really enjoyed what happened here. I felt it improved a little bit more too. Uh, maybe more so than the last time we saw the Outsiders in this book. And in that, I gave it a total of 7 out of 10. To which it was worth $1.50. Uh, some of the reasons is that we had a good, clear understanding of who the cast was in this. Including some of the people that these characters were looking after. Being good heroes as they are. And we also got a good indication of locations such as Katana's Keep and the safe house where Duke Thomas was. I really enjoyed that in the story and it's worth the seven for each. Thank you very much. At least it's nice to get something decent out of this story run. Now to move on to the third story. As we begin to move on to the third story. This art in this was as good as the previous story. And I really enjoyed that. Now this is some of the art at the beginning. As well as we've got direct location of where this takes place thank you very much to the writer who is working on this all right i appreciate what you're doing here so let's move 
to something towards the end of this story, and I'll carry over to what I thought the art and the story was worth. As you can see in this part, we encounter Astrid Arkham, who's by the side of one of the characters of Dr. Phosphorus, and it's really nice to see this character actually bloom a little bit more. Um, it's a big improvement, and I really hope that the writer who worked on this series also went back to Peter J. Tomasi, as this is a character connected to him, and also spoke with him of how they could improve the character. And I think they've done a really good job, and it's sort of shown that here as it gives this character a bit of redemption. Not just Astrid Arkham, but Astrid Arkham seeking redemption for some of the villains that are up against the army of the Magistrate. For this, I gave the art 7 out of 10, to which I believe it was worth $1.50. For the story, um, the creator of this really took the time to um, introduce locations such as the shipyard and Wayne Manor so we did get to return to Wayne Manor we got a good understanding of who the cast of characters were they didn't forget that and I really appreciate that of course we encounter the peacekeepers who the Arkham Knights are up against And I thought they did a really fantastic job here. And thank you very much for what you did here. And it's worth the 7 out of 10. To which overall it gets a total of $3. The total of $3 was also for the last one. And as you can see, it this reached probably under the met criteria for this in regards to how much it's actually worth in Australian dollars. Now let's move on to Wonder Woman. Now it's time to finally move on to Wonder Woman. Now did the cover help in any way with the story? Mm, no. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Uh, it sort of sucked. It stunk. Um, this did sort of have quite a bit of potential, but any potential of it has sort of slipped. Slipped and fallen. And it slipped and fallen to a 4 out of 10, to which I believe it was worth 90 cents. Now, let's cover some of the internal art. Starting with around the beginning. I'll now move to something around the middle. This is around the middle. And now we'll move towards the end. And this is of course towards the end. Even though the art was okay. I still gave it a 4. Because of the story. And it didn't really help. So again it got 4 out of 10. To which I believe it was worth 90 cents. But what about the story? Where does this, where are some of the places that this takes place? Of course, the beginning lets us know that we start off in the underworld. Then we later on, due to some stupid reasons, end up in Femiscira. Um, it's not really clever as to how we, in, or how the character ended up in Femiscira um, after their encounter with who they encountered in the underworld. Um, did they sell their soul to this person? I got no idea. Uh, and that's the way it sort of came across. But what about the cast of characters? Well, the only known characters in this are just Yara and Kaipora. 
and this is why it also led me to giving the story 4 out of 10 to which I believe it's worth 90 cents nice attempt Joelle Jones um, but I am glad about one thing that you did change in this issue and that's not showing the area of Gehenna um, it didn't really work well in the first issue and this is why in this correction of the second issue of not having Gehenna show it did make it that little bit better but the score still remains the same well well until the next lot of videos come up covering the DC Comics Future State Fool's Gold um, I hope you're enjoying the content and I look forward to any of your comments of what you thought of this series uh, please don't forget to like share subscribe hit the notification bell until then let's keep it colorful and if you've now reached the end of this video you are awesome